Well, welcome race fans to Race Face TV and tonight's edition of Race Face Spotlight. So Race Face Spotlight is all about us talking about our race face drivers. And tonight we're going to be talking to 13-year-old Joe Valento from up in Scandia, Minnesota. Uh, Joe started racing when he was eight years old. So Joe, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm good, man. You're looking good. Thank you. All right. So it was kind of weird because Joe and I actually spent, was it last weekend? Yep. We, yeah, we spent last weekend together. We were at Iowa Speedway and uh, Joe came down and with his parents and his and his little sister and actually was supporting some of the uh, the other race face drivers that were running there in the NASCAR K&N series. So, uh, Joe, I know that you came originally from the quarter midget um, and you ran both USAC and the, the QMA. So tell us a little bit about your, your history in quarter midgets. Well, I started when I was eight and that was at the Cedar Lake dirt track in Wisconsin. That was all QMA stuff. We started uh, there and then we went to Elko in Minnesota and that's also QMA. And that was the first year. We just ran a couple of asphalt races, just kind of getting used to it and just for a little bit of learning for me. And then the next year we got two more cars and ran two on asphalt and then one on dirt. So I, we didn't have to switch the cars back and forth after at each race day. So then the next year we had gotten both two cars on dirt and two cars on asphalt. And then we started winning a bit there and we were realizing I wasn't getting enough as a driver. So that's when we decided to start heading out to race with the USAC National Series to race against the most uh, skilled drivers and the most have the most competitive races so I would learn more as a driver. So for 2016, 2017, that's what I did. Just me learning as a driver and getting more experience with uh, the better racers out there. Yeah, and that's, that's really good because a lot of times people get caught up with, you know, oh, I want to win a championship. I want to win this championship at my local track. And they miss that opportunity to go out and compete against some of that better competition and run the, some of those national events. And, and I think you were really smart. You and your dad and mom were really smart in doing that because it not only exposes you to a lot of other things, but it's the experience of having to travel. It's the experience of racing on different tracks all the time. So sometimes, you know, you kind of get used to running on a particular track. And again, if you're not challenging yourself, then you're not developing. So I think that was really yeah. smart. So in yeah. 2018, this year, you guys decided to step it up again and do some micro sprint racing. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so we got the micro sprint this year, and that was in April. And our first race, we got Fort City Raceway. And Fort City is the toughest track in the country. Everyone says it. So it's a great track for learning. So we've been going down there. I think we've been there four or five different times. And we keep going back there just because of learning. And there's top drivers there every single weekend. So I always know that when I go there, I'm going to have competitive races. Also, we've been to US 24 in Indiana. That's a, all, that's a very fun track, too. That's my personal favorite. And we've been racing, last weekend we're in Menominee, Wisconsin, and we also run races at Princeton. So we're getting around and I'm hoping to race a little bit or find different tracks and more fun tracks to race at. Yeah, because I know when you guys go down there, um, that track right outside of Tulsa, I mean, that's like the Daytona 500 for micro sprint drivers. I mean, that's the top. And, and what, what makes that track so special? I mean, it's not like it's, you know, easy to get to. I know you guys travel about, what, about 11 hours one way just yeah. to get there? So what makes that yeah. track attractable, I would say, to all of these top drivers? Well, track is so small and big, so you're always constantly up on the wheel. You're never, like, just resting. You're always up, you're driving as hard as you can. It's so banked and small that the wall comes up so quick, so you're always got to be up on the wheel, and it's just it's a fast track and it's really good for us as drivers to learn at it. Well, I, I know that you guys have had some, you know, some success there. I mean, maybe not as much as you wanted, but again, um, I think it's all about the experience going there and pushing yourself just a little bit further. So you're uh, doing micro sprint this year. What is, what are your goals moving forward? Let's, let's talk about the next three or four years. Where does, where does Joe see himself? 
I want to transition back over to the asphalt and start racing late mall over the next couple of years. So I know that you, you talked a little bit about doing some quarter midget racing at Elko, and I know that you actually went up to Elko and visited with Sheldon, went up and watched Sheldon Creed uh, run one of the ARCA races up there. So do you see maybe yourself going there and getting back on the asphalt? Yes, that's definitely what I would want to do as a driver. Right. So the late models, that's going to be another big, another big step. You know, going, you know, again, on dirt this year, and then now you're going to go back to asphalt, get in a bigger, heavier car. And uh, yes. so what are your expectations doing that? Well, I just, I've got to do my best and just perform it the best as I can. That's all I can really do. Right. So, you know, I, I don't have any doubts at all that you're going to do very well there because, you know, uh, we know that you are a fast learner. We know that you have speed and those are the two of the things that people can't really teach you. Drivers are either fast or they're not fast and we know that you're fast in everything that you get into. But um, you know the other cool thing is is that you're going to have some of our other race face drivers that you can kind of lean on for a little bit of information and like I said I know that you've had the opportunity now to meet Ryan Vargas and Anthony Alfredo and Sam Mayer and you've met uh, you've met Sheldon, so you're going to get a lot of support from us on this side. And, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're actually talking, we can't really talk about who we're talking to, but we're actually talking about getting, you know, you set up for that, uh, for that asphalt journey next year. And if we can put all these pieces of the puzzles together, you're going to have a really exciting year next year. I hope you're excited about that. I am for sure. It's going to be a very action-packed and fun year. So... There's not a lot of weekends that you actually have off because, again, you're racing all over the place. And so what does is, what is Joe like to do when you're not behind the wheel of the car? Well, if we get some snow, Minnesota's kind of iffy on it. I like to ride my snowmobile. And I also like four-wheeling during the summer. And also I like to do some deer hunting when that season comes around. So are you a fisherman at all? Do you do any fishing? or? Yeah. All right, so... Too. That wouldn't be a big surprise coming, you know, living in Minnesota, being an outdoors person, that puts you in a category with a whole bunch of other drivers that, you know, like Martin Truex and Ryan Newman and Richard Childress, all those people are big outdoors people. Now, I want to talk about something that we talked about the last time that we interviewed you, only because you're the only driver I've ever ran into that actually raced on the ice. I know you ran those quarter midgets on the ice. I'm not, I, I can guarantee you that will not happen here in Florida. You'd never get that yeah. opportunity. Maybe put some sand dune tires on a quarter midget and run it. But for those people that might not have seen that, what was it like to get into a quarter midget and actually race on solid ice? That was a lot of fun. You've got to thank the Balkans from the Minnesota Fair for um, putting that on from the, the state fairground. That was a lot of fun, for sure. And we did the studs in the tires, and that gave us grip or a little bit anyways of traction and it was just overall a great experience and a lot of fun well and like i said i i, I wanted to just bring that up because i've not heard of a bunch of people that's ever done that now i know the other thing that you're working on really hard this year and that you guys um, have realized is so important that you got to be good on the track but you also have to be good off the track and so you've been working really hard on your personal appearances your interviews which you know, you've done great with that right out of the box and you're working on your social media. So share with the younger drivers a little bit your opinion on just how important it is to connect with fans and be really good at what you do off the track. So for sure, social media is just as important as being a good race car driver itself. Um, you have to brand yourself and show your sponsors or potential sponsors that you're willing to talk about them and talk good about them and you just always have to be talking positive and being a positive person overall to help not only the racetracks with getting fans to watch the races and um, supporting the tracks and drivers but all like I said the sponsors too you have to be positive and always talk good about it. Yeah, so I think you make a, a, a sponsor, a, 
a, a great spokesperson. And, and if you guys haven't had the chance, I encourage you to go to Facebook and Joe Valento Racing. Uh, like Joe's Facebook, start to, start to follow him, become a follower. Uh, you'll be really glad that you did because I think there's big things in the future for, for this young race car driver. Now, I know when you were at Elko Speedway, you got to meet and spend, you know, just a couple of maybe minutes with, with Sheldon Creed, but you also got to meet a very good friend of mine and you got to meet one of the top NASCAR development people in the, in the industry ever, and that was Lauren Rainier. So tell me a little bit what that was like. That was great. I was really glad we were able to meet Laura and talk with him about him. He's just a great guy overall. And like you said, he's a big name in the racing community. And it was just great that we were able to meet up and talk with him a little bit. So you know what? If you look back, the last six or seven months of your life have really been kind of like full speed ahead. You've, um, you know, we're, we're really excited to have you as a race face next driver. Um, you've got to you know, kind of get behind the scenes a little bit and see, you know, especially what was going on in the K&N series. You've been to a couple ARCA races. And is it what you expected or is it maybe even almost a little overwhelming at this point? You know, it is a little overwhelming, but then again, it is what I expected. When you go to the races, you see a lot of teamwork. I have to say there's a lot of teamwork involved in getting those cars ready and on the track and preparing them if it's needed, getting them ready. And it is what I expected, but then again, it is a little overwhelming. Yeah, I know that you got to, you did a little tour with Anthony Alfredo up through the hauler and and uh, a lot of different things like that. And, you know, I know that you've uh, you've done a little bit of talking with my with my friend Tom Baker, who's a, basically a driver coach. And Tom speaks very, very highly of you. So these are all good things. Like I said, it's been an exciting seven months. Are you ready for the next seven months? I am. It's going to be a blast. It's going to be a blast. Well, is there anything, any of your sponsors you'd like to give a shout out to before we uh, end up the interview? Yeah, I'd like to thank Smiley Sewer Service, Boss Pumping, Linux Supply, The Blacksmith, Trail Frameworks. They build my race car. They do a fantastic job. Uh, CSI Shocks, Momo's Racing Engine, and Jake from J2K Motorsports down in Tulsa. They build my cars. And also Chris Barrett, he does all the fuel injection stuff and making sure our car's running top notch. All right, well, that's good. Well, I wanted to ask you one more question, because like I said, I've, I've had the opportunity to, to meet your dad, meet your mom, uh, meet, your, you know, meet your little sister. I talk to your dad almost every day now, but how important it is, is it to you to have that type of support behind you? It's super important to have a family behind you. If you don't, you're just doing it all by yourself. I mean, your family motivates you and helps you along or along the way. They're there for you whenever you're down or whenever you're not feeling good about yourself. So it's definitely important that you have a good family backing you up. Yeah, and and I and like I said, I mean, you you've got a great support mechanism there. So Joe, I want to thank you for being on the show. We look forward to uh, doing these with you every every two or three months and keeping the fans, you know, kind of connected. Make sure if you're watching the show tonight that you go to JoeValentoRacing.com, um, find out a whole lot more information about Joe and his racing career. And then again, just follow along with him. I think he's got a Twitter account and an Instagram account. So uh, Joe, again, thanks for being with us. And uh, we hope to have you back here, you know, later on this year. For sure. Okay, well, everybody, thanks for tuning in to Race Face Spotlight. There you have it. One of the up and coming drivers, one of our Race Face Next drivers, Joe Valento from up in Scandia, Minnesota. I'm learning, Joe, better how to pronounce these names from Minnesota. It's like all these towns are like really crazy names, but we're getting through that. So uh, not only are we teaching you some things, but you guys are teaching us. So again, everybody, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you back here in two weeks with the next Race Face Spotlight. Have a great evening.